A sunny summer day. Neatly lined up in crowded rows are umeboshi pickled plums. Ume plums pickled in salt, then dried. Umeboshi are a traditional Japanese preserved food with a unique taste. <laughs> a grimace inducing sourness. Their sour and salty flavor makes them an excellent companion to rice. People all over Japan have loved this pickled food for more than a thousand years. Umeboshi are the passion of this woman, who's been making them for over half a century. She wishes to pass on Japan's time-honored food culture to the next generation. Let's look through the kitchen window and follow her story. A quiet residential area in Tokyo. It's here that we find this house. As we open the door, we're greeted by a bunch of jars. These are all processed ume plums. This is the residence of Norimatsu Sachiko, who also sells her homemade ume products here. She's now 82 years old. Her passion for ume plums has led her to continue making umeboshi for more than 50 years. Every year around June, she gets deliveries of fresh harvested ume. <laughs> Sachiko uses a special kind of plum for her umeboshi. Called Sukita ume, they're a variety bigger than other types and are rich in citric acid, the source of their sourness. Umeboshi's key ingredients are the plums themselves and salt. First, Sachiko firmly rubs plenty of salt onto the ume. Thanks to the abundant citric acid and salt, umeboshi can be kept for a long time without preservatives. She neatly lays the ume plums in a jar and waits for two weeks. The juice that comes out of the salted plums is called white ume vinegar. Next, Sachiko will turn the color of the ume to red. For that, she uses akashiso, or red perilla. She kneads the leaves with salt to remove their bitterness. And when she pours ume vinegar, this reddish purple liquid is called red ume vinegar. This will dye the plums. Sachiko now pickles the perilla leaves along with the ume. She pours white ume vinegar into the jar and lets it sit for two more weeks. 
The power of Perilla has turned the ume plums a bright red. The final step will be the drying. The umeboshi still have a long way to go. Something prompted a major change in Sachiko's life. Over 50 years ago, these umeboshi were found stored under the floor of a traditional Japanese restaurant where she worked. These were made far more than a century ago and are still perfectly good to eat. Sachiko had found her calling to make umeboshi that would stand the test of time. Since then, through trial and error, Sachiko has been striving to produce the ideal umeboshi. At the height of summer, umeboshi making enters its final stage. Sachiko is drying her ume plums in the sun in a corner of this shrine's backyard. This step lasts for three days and nights of fine summer weather. This is key to extending the shelf life of umeboshi. Members of the family in charge of the shrine pitched in to give her a hand. They soften the hard ones and carefully reshape the soft ones. They spread out the plums one by one with tender, loving care. At night, on the third and final day, here comes the moment Sachiko loves the most about making umeboshi. ヨルナトラ温度が冷えるでしょ。塩の塊が強いになるんです。それがルビー色でルビー色ってことは梅の赤、赤色の色が出てるわけ。今年もこういう風にして強いに梅にかかれたの。もう胸を締め付けられるような
She also mixed in a little bit of it when cooking the rice. Red ume vinegar also has a sanitizing effect. What's more, she uses it to make a salad dressing as well. She mixes plenty of red ume vinegar with the other ingredients. To enrich the flavor, Sachiko adds ume extract, made by boiling down ume plums. And the dressing is ready. Next, she slices onions and soaks them in the dressing. Finally, she combines them with tomatoes and lets them sit for about three hours in the refrigerator. And voila! Sachiko's special ume onigiri rice balls with marinated onions and tomatoes. With the mouth-watering aroma of red ume vinegar, they're perfect dishes for summer. Here's a grove of Sugita ume trees, the variety that Sachiko uses for her umeboshi. Sugita ume plums are rich in citric acid and so are essential for making umeboshi that stay good for generations. But Japanese people these days prefer umeboshi with a lighter sourness, and so many Sugita ume trees are being cut down. Sachiko's wish struck a chord with Ono Hiroki, who's been helping her make umeboshi for four years. The two have launched an effort to plant more Sukita ume trees. They send seedlings of Sukita ume to like minded people willing to grow and take care of the trees. In two years, the number of planted seedlings has topped 100. They also had a tree planted at the shrine Sachiko uses to sun dry her plums. It takes six to eight years for Sugita Ume seedlings to bear their large plums. Increasing the number of these trees one by one is truly a labor of love. Ever thankful for umeboshi, Sachiko will continue to make them a part of her life. あの、<笑>